They stepped out of the captain's quarters and into another hallway. The hallway stretched out in front of Junpei for a bit before turning left like a great backward L. Alright, let's go. Junpei rounded the corner and took off down the straightway. He ran. And ran. And ran. At the end of the hallway was a door. That's the next door. He made straight for it. It's the number Wait, nine door, right? A piece of paper. It was nearly halfway to it when he noticed a piece of paper in the middle of the floor. Jinpei skidded to a halt. This is... He dropped down to his hands and knees and quickly tore the paper off of the floor. Map of the ship's interior for a deck. <laughs> What's wrong? A slightly slower by virtue of advanced age had finally caught up to Jinpei. I found a map for this floor. He showed Ace what he snatched from the wall. He looked at it long enough to determine what it was and nodded. I see. With that, he began running again past Junpei. Well, that was anticlimactic. I should keep <laughs> this, though. Jinpei shoved the map into his pocket and got up to follow Ace. But something stopped him. Hey, uh, where's Clover? He turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. Where did Clover go? Damn it. What the hell is she up to? Jinpei muttered angrily under his breath and took off back the way he came. As he stopped around the corner, he saw her. She was standing in front of the door to the captain's quarters, her hand on the doorknob. What's up? Clover! Huh? As Junpei watched, she closed it gently and quietly. <sighs> All the dots. All the dots. What the hell are you doing? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Clover had unconsciously put her hands over the pockets of her jacket as if trying to hide something. What the hell is that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... Hmm, I wonder. What, what are you doing? What the hell? Come on, we gotta hurry. Whoa, whoa. With that, Clover ran straight past the somewhat confused Junpei. As she did, he caught a glimpse of her back. Huh? Clover, what's that on your back? Sticking up from her collar was something that looked like a big one in sick. A stick? Hey, Clover, what the hell's that thing on your back? Is that the axe? She didn't respond. Instead, she quickly turned the corner and disappeared. Is she ignoring me? Ah, for crying out loud. Because she went into the captain's quarters, and there we saw a, um, an axe on the floor. And we saw a big wooden thing coming out of the back of her, uh, around the back. So, it, did she just arm herself? Actually, not a bad idea, considering. But, again, we go back to the gun in the other room, and is it really a wise idea to arm ourselves with people that, you know, were suspicious of? Especially with her, because, I mean, she just lost a brother. I don't think she should be having a weapon right now. Alright, running after Clover, going through the door. Whoa! Junpei pushed through the door and found himself in a large room with a large set of stairs. The big stairs. Huh. So this is where it ends up. Is that the four door? Just like it says on the map. It was just what he expected to see after reading the map. His I see after reading the map himself meant that Ace had probably realized the same thing. Ace, did he head down? He put his hand on the handrail and leaned over to look down. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there's a four door. Look, the four others are there too. And not just Ace, Santa, June, Seven, and Lotus as well. Yay, we all made it. Really? Let's join them. Junpei and Clover glanced at each other and hurried down the stairs. They reached B deck at the same time. Jumpy, Clover. Hey, you guys, how you all doing? June's face was excited. Something had happened. That much June could tell by simply looking at her. What's up? Or Junpei could tell, sorry. Given their situation, he was not inclined to be excited about sudden developments. June, however, couldn't contain herself. We found it! Found what? We found it! What did you find? The nine door? The last door! Yep. We found door nine! Woohoo! What? And we're all together. Come on! Just follow us! We'll explain on the way! Okay. 
So in turn, it jogged off down the stairs. Well, if that's the case... Wait for me. We should get going as well. The rest followed. Jumpy! We finally made it! The relief and excitement in her voice echo what each of them felt. Yeah, it's finally time. Uh, speaking of time, you guys, um, don't forget we only have a certain amount of time before, you know, Zero sinks the ship, right? Jinpei wasn't quite ready to believe that they've done it, at least not just yet. Still, if everyone said that was door nine, then it probably was. We've reached the end. He could feel his heart racing. A mixture of anticipation and fear ran through his veins, and he could feel his legs shaking. He was doing his best to maintain a sense of healthy skepticism, but he couldn't deny the prospect of escape was an exciting one. But something's bothering me. Only three to five people can go through the numbered door. He doesn't know yet that there's two nines. Seven of us are on our way to door nine. That means that, best case scenario, there will be two of us who have to stay behind. Two people. Is there a way? Jinpei looked over at the clock. 4.30. We've only got 90 minutes left. I've got no time to wonder about it now. Hey, Junpei! Jun! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Santa's voice jolted Junpei out of his revere. Revere? Reveri? Reveri? Whatever. Let's go, Jumpy! Jun took off down the stairs, jogging as quickly as she could. Yeah. Junpei followed. They were quiet for a while until... They had just reached Sea Deck when Clover spoke. Hey, what about door two? Everyone else, stop. We all turned to look at Clover. Oh, what if Seven spoke? What about door two? She's thinking, hey, what if my brother is behind door two, right? Door two is the only one we didn't... We haven't gone through it, I mean. Yes, that is true. Are you guys okay with that? Not investigating it, I mean? So what? We found door nine. We don't need any of the other doors. What's the point? Huh? What's the point in going to door nine? Hmm. We can't all go through it, right? Hmm. Then we should do what we have to do before we go any further. But is anyone else going to say, hey, there's two door nines? Because the door nine that we saw had the door nine on the opposite side of the wall. Unless they saw the door nine and then immediately turned around and left without actually looking in the room. Hmm. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. The best way to finish it quickly is to do the border pieces first, you know? Ugh. There's a lot of dots in response to, uh, <laughs> to her here. Or what? You think all seven of us should go to door nine? And then we argue over who stays behind and who gets to go? Do we really want to do that again? <laughs> who knows? If we check out door two, maybe we'll find some. Maybe we can find a way to get all of us out. Huh. I don't know what might be in there. We may not find anything. But don't you think it'd be better to at least have a look? I mean, am I wrong? Does that sound wrong to you guys? Hmm. Yeah, just like no one can respond to her. <sighs> just so many dots. <sighs> infinite amount of dots. <sighs> just just yeah, infinite you amount of dots. Point. The others had in agreement. The last time I checked the clock, it was 4.30. It's not like we've got a lot of time, but if we're quick about it, we might have time to take a look. You're right. Let's go take a look at door two. All the dots. Even more dots. They were back in front of the elevator. Nearby was a large hospital The room. elevator can take us down to door two. Who shall go then? Let's see. Me. I'm going. Then June, seven, and I need to go with her. Four plus three plus six plus seven is 20. Two plus zero is two. Hey, why do you get to... I don't mind. We would only waste time arguing over it. Jumpy, I'm okay too. See? Can we just go now? Ah, <sighs> fine. All right, let's get going. I'll see you later. Okay. Be careful. They climbed into the elevator and Junpei listened to it creak and rattle its way to the bottom deck. Only Junpei, Ace, and Lotus were left. As the elevator rumbled out of sight, Ace spoke. Lotus, would you be so kind as to go with me? Go with you? Well, I didn't think people still talked that way outside of the 1950s. <laughs> well, 
I'm a mother. Would that be a problem for you? Uh, that wasn't what I meant to. <laughs> I was hoping you would come with me. <laughs> Seriously, though. I was kidding. <laughs> so, where was it you wanted to take me? There's something I wanted to show you. Hey, man, what the hell? I'm not important enough? Well, it's not like that. Once I've shown Lotus, I'll show you. Okay. Really? Of course. It's the smile was friendly. Fine. Do whatever you want. Thanks, Junpei. Are you coming, Lotus? Fine. Doesn't look like they're going to be back anytime soon. I might as well go and see whatever it is you think is so important. Thank you. Well then, shall we go? And what are we gonna do? Ace turned and began to walk. Lotus followed. They disappeared into the hallway on the left. All the dots. Yeah, more dots. La 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 la. Time seemed to drag as Junpei waited for the others to return. Ugh, they're so slow. And what's keeping Ace and Lotus? Suddenly, the elevator opened. A single person stood there. Clover! <laughs> I guess you're the first one back. There was only Clover inside. He didn't see the rest. All the dots. She looked at Junpei, then slowly, purposely stepped out of the elevator. The door closed behind her. Uh, what, what's going Where's on? Where's everybody else? What happened? Yeah, she didn't answer. Instead, her eyes swept the room, and then saw on Junpei. Where are Ace and Lotus? Hmm? Oh, uh, Ace said he wanted to show Lotus something, so they went into that hallway. Junpei explained what had happened. All the dots. Oh, then they went over there? Her voice is small and timid. Yeah, I think so. He repeated his earlier question. So where are June, Santa, and Seven? Why aren't they with you? You really want to know? Okay, that was creepy. There was something wrong with her smile. <laughs> All the dots. Yeah. Okay, sure. Here, let me show you. Okay, this is really creepy now. Clover pulled something out of her pocket and tossed it over the floor at Junpei's feet. Huh? He looked down. On the floor in front of him were three metal rings. Bracelets. Oh, oh no. My God. Oh, holy shit. Junpei collapsed. No. No, 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 no way. No way. This, this has got to be some kind of joke. This... This can't be real. Junpei's body felt like rubber. <laughs> All the dots. His heart felt like a cold lump in his chest and his hand shook uncontrollably. Sweat poured down over his face. The three bracelets sat there on the floor before him. You could see the numbers on the faces. Three. Seven. And oh. six. Six. No. All the dots. Why does everyone always have to die? Yes, I know. There are only two ways to do You escape or you die. Yeah, I know. But why? Junpei's voice was flat and broken. Clover's response was cold. Revenge for my brother. Oh my Jesus. She killed him. He was forced into door three and murdered. You need at least three people to open a door. Who were the two that opened that door with him? It could only have been Santa and Seven. You know, as much as I would like to falter for saying that, didn't we say that exact same thing? Well, first we totally messed up the math. But once I realized I messed up the math, I said the exact same thing. There were only two people who could have done it, and that's Santa and Seven. So I... But but why did you have to kill June? I mean, why did you have to kill... I'm... That's why I killed them. Two plus three plus seven is twelve. Plus one. One plus two is three. But, but why? Why did you kill June? Because she tried to protect them. Oh, jeez. She was in my way. She had to die, too. This girl has turned into a homicidal maniac. Oh. No. Junpei shook his head, trying desperately to wake himself from what he had, from what had to be a dream. No. No. It couldn't be real. It just couldn't. Hey, Junpei. He felt Clover's hand on his shoulder. <laughs> Her smile was wrong. It's horribly wrong. Her face looked like a mask made from stretched human skin. The smile that parted her lips did not extend to her eyes. They were dead and empty. 
girl in front of him was no longer the clover he had known. Perhaps she was not even human. Let's go. Her hand reached out toward him. Let's get out of here. Let's leave this ship. What the hell are you talking about? To to open a numbered door, you Yes, I know. You need at least three people. But as long as we have this. Once again, Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. That's there was another bracelet. Jinpei could see the number on the face. Zero. Zero? The zero bracelet. You've got, You've got something, something in your, in your pocket. pocket. What, what is, is it? it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... All the dots. Even more dots. See? You get it now? If we have the zero bracelet, we can leave. You and I can open door nine with just the two of us. Four plus five is nine plus zero is nine. See? So let's go. <sighs> All the dots. Come on. Hurry up. She shoved her hand out again. <sighs> All the dots. Jinpei looked up at Clover. She had the face of a demon. But there was something else. There was a holy light that surrounded her. She was both a fierce god and a benevolent goddess, filled with love. Junpei? Her voice was soft. Her eyes weren't empty anymore. They were deep. So deep, Junpei could fall, feel himself falling into them. <sighs> All the dots. He felt dizzy. There was something oddly bewitching about her. His mind was beginning to crack, and his heart began to melt. Junpei. The hand she was offering him. It looked so soft, so inviting. <sighs> Clover. Jinpei reached out with his own trembling hand and closed it over his- No! Yeah? No! No! <laughs> oh. Jinpei writhed in agony. He shuddered and twitched. His body spasming as he went into shock. <laughs> See, it was the axe. We were right, it was the axe. He screamed until his throat was torn and bloody and screamed, then screamed no more. His eyes, his cries echoed across the room. Eventually, his movement slowed, then faded. There was no more strength left in Junpei. He could feel his body begin to go numb. He no longer felt pain. He no longer felt anything. Whatever Jimpy had been was gone. The last remnants of his mind began to fade. All the time. Even more time. Even as his vision faded to nothingness, he saw Clover. Thanks, Jimpei. I'm just gonna borrow this, okay? Her smile was cold. <clears throat> What was left of Junpei's conscious mind drifted away. All that was left was a twisted, broken corpse. Well, ending number three. Once again, bad end. Oh, this game is just, this game is just like, tearing my heart out every single time I play it. And yet, I love it, and I keep going back for more. Save complete. Access the flow chart return to the screen to start from the beginning. So we have a giant axe up there now. This is bad end axe. And what's interesting though is, look at this. This all wasn't here before. These keys here? These only showed up after we got this. So there's a white... Oh my goodness, look at this. There's a red path. And a white path. And according to this... In order... Oh... I'm starting to understand how this flowchart works. So in order to unlock this ending, you gotta go down all the reds. And in order to unlock this ending, you gotta go down all the whites. Oh. But the good news is we should be able to jump 
No, we can't jump because we got to go through these locks. Oh, we're going to have to do these escape rooms again just to go through these things. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Well, that makes things interesting. And it looks like we're going to have to go through these rooms to unlock. Wait, do we need to unlock these locks or are they automatically unlocked? Oh, we'll probably have to play through them just to make sure. Wow, there's just so much going on here. Oh, there's, there, there's so much going on here. Okay, so now that I think I know how these flowcharts work, let's go ahead and look at the um, uh, this flowchart control now. Flowchart control, cursor, jump to scene, back. Wait, that's it? I, I thought you were going to tell me how the flowchart actually worked, and you don't. Oh, that's so sad. That's really, really sad. Um, Yeah. Uh, so I guess what we're going to do in the next episode here is... Um, we were going to have to go down this path. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump here. And I'm going to record it. And I'm going to basically um, jigsaw puzzle uh, the recording together. And I'm going to try to pull out any, um, any, uh, any specific action that I notice that's different from what might be versus what might not be and what do i mean by that i mean um you remember that time when we were i forget i forgot which one it was was it this one here or there, you, there was a time when um we said something and and it was with clover and uh, i'm sorry it wasn't with clover it was with lotus and junpei and i said hey i wonder if this would have happened if we didn't do something earlier in the game uh, so that's what I want to know is, will that work? Now, what this ending does, though, it also brings up an interesting question. Clover killed us and then took our bracelet. Does that mean that the bracelets work even if you're dead? So, like, if we are dead, can you take someone else's bracelet and use their bracelet to get through a door? Because if you can... That might change how you play this game. I'm not sure exactly what that means just yet. Um, but it is something... Well, I'm just so blown away by these white and red keys everywhere. And these white and red locks. Um, okay, so I want to try to get this ending first. Because on the flowchart, this one is longer. Uh, so I'm going to work to try to get this ending first. And it will probably be a couple of playthroughs. Uh, me trying to scratch my head and bang my head against the wall to figure out how to unlock all these. Uh, because I will know if we did it right if this key is unlocked. Okay, I'm babbling enough. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, at least that end wasn't as horrifying as the submarine ending. Because it kind of foreshadowed itself with Clover um, going away with the, the axe. Although, I will admit when... I, I wouldn't have expected her to kill anyone. But when she came out of the elevator all alone, my brain just went, oh my god, uh, what happened? And then when she dropped the bracelets on the ground, I was like, oh my god, she just killed people. Now, I don't think that she's zero, though. Because why would she need to kill us in order to get the bracelets if she's zero? I think she just mentally broke. As she said, it's revenge. Um, the idea being that um, according to our calculations, only four and seven could have gone through that door. And that's something that we decided earlier. Um, but additionally, uh, she just killed us as a way to, you know, get our bracelet and to move on because she probably didn't trust anyone. I mean, once she killed three people, her brain probably broke and she had no problem killing anyone else. So I don't think Clover is the killer. I definitely think she has a potentiality to be the killer, but I don't think she's the killer. Uh, only one way to find out, and that's to just keep on playing. We have, what does it look like? Um, three endings left. No, two endings left. Wait a second. One, two, three, four, five. Wait a second. I just noticed something. There's six endings, but there's only five paths. How does that work? Uh, anyway, only one way to find out, and that's to join us next time on a blind let's play of 999. Find this word out. I'm going to go get something to eat and uh, try to forget that this happened, because that's, that's just scary. Ah, oh. see you guys next time.
Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you would like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more. Also, please do not forget, you matter, you are brilliant, and you are loved. And you should always remember to be true to yourself. Don't let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly feathered flightless bird. Till next time.